Now, from Sports Radio 810 WHB, it's the Border Patrol on 38 The Spot. It's showtime! Now, on Sports Radio 810 WHB, Walker Medical Linen Services, delivering premium products, seamless service, and guaranteed cost savings to the medical industry. And Coventry Healthcare, your great local health insurance plan, proudly present The Border Patrol with Stephen St. John and Nate Bucay. Good morning, Kansas City. This is the Border Patrol live on Sports Radio 810 WHB and 38 The Spot. It is a beautiful, I think it's beautiful, I love this kind of weather, Thursday, October 17, 2013. Stephen St. John with Nate Bucati along with Aaron Swartz and Jake Gutierrez. Right now we're going to talk about the Major League Baseball playoffs, ALCS, NLCS in full effect with our baseball insider from ESPN, Mr. Buster Only Buster. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, guys. What's going on? Oh, a lot of baseball in uh, in the middle of a very exciting football season. We're still focused on the playoffs, and I know you are in Detroit. The Tigers last night get it done against the Boston Red Sox 7-3 to behind the pitching of Doug Fister, and they are able to even that series at two games apiece. Looks like we're headed towards uh, very dramatic games, uh, maybe 5, 6, and 7. What are your thoughts so far about the first four games of this series? Well, uh, I, I've never seen pitching like this in, in a postseason. When you're talking about, you know, the Red Sox hitting 133 for the first three games of this series, you're talking about a lineup that was number one in all of baseball, and the way the Tigers have pitched has been unbelievable. And if you're the Red Sox and you're going into game five tonight and you're facing Anibal Sanchez, you've got John Lester on the mound. Lester's basically been your best pitcher. He's your number one starter. I mean, you better win. Because it's two to two, and if you lose this one, you'd go home. Yes, and you'd love playing at Fenway Park, but you'd be seeing Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander in Game Six and Seven, and guys, the way they threw and the, the type of stuff they have, that's not something. Uh, that's not a situation you, you want to have if you're the Red Sox. Well, and of course, Royals fans saw this all year with the rotation that the Tigers have. These have been low-scoring games until the one last night when Detroit put up seven, Buster. And I've heard some people claim that uh, this is boring because there's not enough offense. To me, I, I look at, like you said, Boston and, and Detroit both have fantastic offenses. So if they're getting shut down, that means we're seeing amazing pitching. Do you think, is, is there much talk around the, the two teams as to whether or not this is good or bad for for ratings and all that to have these, these low-scoring games like this? Well, Justin Verlander said the other day after his start, and, and it was funny because he, he had lost. You know, he, he uh, got locked up in a game, and in a 0-0 in a zero -zero game, and he pitched his tail off, and John Lackey pitched his tail off, and it all came down to one pitch, a home run that Verlander allowed to Mike Napoli. Normally in that situation, you don't have – uh, the losing pitcher going to the interview room, but he went down there, and he was so even keeled about it, and you could tell he had zero regrets about what happened in the game, and he said, look, if you like baseball and you're not enjoying what you're seeing, then you're out of your mind, and I'm paraphrasing, but he basically was talking about, you know, this is a series of you know, great stars in this series, you have unbelievable uh, competition, and I can tell you, you know, I've been doing the post-game interviews for ESPN, and when you talk to these guys after the games, they are exhausted, even you know, in a, in a shorter game, in a way that I've never seen before. And I think it's because mentally, every pitch they know could be the turning point of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's been fascinating to see that. Uh, and, and that's what happens when you have low-scoring games like this. Of all the great pitching you've seen, who do you think uh, had the best performance? Oh, I, I was just blown away by the, the, the stuff that Scherzer had. And, you know, he pitched the game where the Tigers had a big lead and then they blew it when David Ortiz hit the grand slam. But And I talked to some of the Red Sox players about it, and they were just in awe of how he was dotting the corners knee-high with his fastball. It's the same thing I heard from the Yankees when they faced Scherzer last year where they, they were basically saying, you got nothing to swing at. I, I You know, from a hitter's perspective, uh, when he's – 
so precise in the way that he is, and he's pitching down in the zone like that, you have nothing to swing at. And, and, you know, as great as he was, I thought Verlander yesterday, or two days ago, was almost as good. He He just made that one mistake to Napoli. It's been a fantastic series so far. We're visiting with Buster Olney, who is in Detroit, and uh, Game 5 is tonight in Detroit. And, Buster, both offenses, as we mentioned, have been in a funk, whether it's because the the pitching induced it or not. And Jim Leland decided to shake up his lineup last night, and then he gets to look like the genius because they go out and score seven runs. How much credit does Leland deserve for the the shuffling of the lineup, uh, maybe getting the uh, Detroit offense started? I, I think he deserves some. Uh, for sure. Uh, you know, you give him credit for, for being willing to make a change. And he was very funny before the game talking about it. He kind of went on a semi-rant uh, when some some writer used the word panic in a question. And he was like, I gave you guys something to write about. You wanted something to write about? I gave you something to write about. <laughs> um, but I thought it was the right move because Austin Jackson, their leadoff hitter, had just, you could tell, he was in such a mental funk, 3 for 33, and he was striking out in about half of his at-bats. And so he moves now to the eighth spot. And Torrey Hunter told me after last night's game, hey, you know, it helped to relax him. It helped to change things. It gave him something else to look at. He had Torrey Hunter hitting leadoff for the first time since 99, Miguel Cabrera hitting second for the first time since 2004. But, you know, really, the, at the heart of what the Tigers did offensively last night was the fact that Jake Peavy just could not command his two-seam fastball. And when you know, there was a spot in the second inning when the Red Sox could have avoided a big inning uh, and gotten out with just a, a one run, Jose Iglesias hits a hard grounder right at Dustin Pedroia, and he could not turn a double play. He kind of fumbled the ball for a moment, uh, and the t- 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 Tigers went on to score four runs after that. You know, that was the turning point in the game, and I think that really probably is more at the heart of why the Tigers broke out. Based on what you've seen these first four games, uh, has anything changed your mind from what you first predicted? Who do you have uh, going on from the series? Well, uh, I'm genius that I am. I pick Oakland to be in the World Series before right. the playoffs started. So uh, I can't say. I-, I thought coming into it, I didn't think it was a good matchup for Detroit. But Sanchez and Scherzer and Verlander were even better than I thought. You know, I saw the Verlander you guys did for most of this year where his fastball velocity was down. Mm-hmm. I had veteran hitters on other teams telling me, look, he's just not the same. He's got to try to trick you. Verlander believes that the mechanical adjustments that he was uh, struggling to make in the first part of the year finally became second nature in the last month. And he's throwing the heck out of the ball. He's touching 97. He's thrown all four of his pitches for strikes. And uh, I, you know, as I say... Red Sox better win tonight because I would not want to go into those last two games needing to beat those two guys. All right, uh, Buster, let's move over to the NLCS. Former Royal Zach Greinke gets the win last night for the Los Angeles Dodgers, and they avoid elimination. Now the series is at 3-2 uh, to two in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, what kind of chance do you give uh, the Dodgers of making the complete comeback and eliminating the Cardinals in seven? I give him a real chance. Uh, you know, I, I still, and I picked the Cardinals, I finally got one right, picked them to play in the World Series uh, before the postseason began, or I think I might get one right. You know, and and I, let's face it, when you get Adam Wayne right in Game 7, you still feel good if you're the Cardinals about your chances. But Clayton Kershaw is the best pitcher on the planet right now, and he's thrown Game 6. And Hyunjin Ryu is one of those guys, it seems like, where you know you look at him, he's a little bit pudgy. Uh, he, 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 you know, he doesn't throw 100 miles an hour. Man, is he good. And he can command. And we've seen this year the Cardinals, when they face Kershaw and Ryu, they have all kinds of problems. So absolutely they have a chance. Buster, I know that uh, Carlos Beltran's postseason batting average right now is not fantastic, but he's had some some major moments already in this postseason. And when he left Kansas City, I I thought to myself, I just covered a future Hall of Famer. This guy is going to the Hall of Fame. And I think some injuries have kind of derailed most of the numbers that would put him in that category. But his postseason numbers... I mean, you're talking about a guy that's hitting more postseason home runs now than Babe Ruth. Has his production in the postseason put him back in the conversation as a potential Hall of Famer? Yeah, he's a borderline candidate right now. Uh, You know, I think if he retired today, 
that he would be a guy who would be named on a lot of ballots his first time on. I don't think he would get in. Um, and it's interesting, early in the year I actually had a long conversation with him about his legacy. And you could tell Carlos was starting to think about that a lot, and he was starting to think about how his next team, you know, he felt like he was open to the idea of being a designated hitter. Um, he understands where he stands in, uh, in numbers among guys who are switch hitters, among players from Puerto Rico, and this has become really important to him. And I think if he has a couple more productive years, and I, and I know that the Cardinals – uh, could make him a qualifying offer, and if they did that, there's a chance he would come back. But if he goes to an American League team, he can serve as a DH for you know two years, you know, and I think he's a guy who could age well, maybe three years, and he got up in the range of 2,700 hits and, and, and got his 400th home run, then I think he'd have an excellent shot, in part because of what you're talking about. I mean, he's, he's one of the greatest postseason players of all time. I want to bring the Royals into this discussion for a couple of reasons. There's two possible moves I want to ask you about, but the roadblock to both is the fact that the Royals have Billy Butler at DH. Yep. So we'll start here with Carlos Beltran. Because the Royals have to get creative if they want to fill the, the offensive void in right field or in second base. So if you're the Royals, do you consider, okay, let, let's bring in Beltran. He can play outfield a couple of days a week. We can play him at DH quite a bit. And then maybe does that open you up to the possibility of trading Billy Butler to try to fill the hole at second base or right field? Is that something that you would consider if you were Kansas City? Well, uh, I mean, it would have to be. Uh, I mean, first off, I don't think there's very much chance that that would happen. And I'll tell you why about him playing right field. And that surprised me because I. You know, I wrote a column about a month ago in which I said, you know, it's a no-brainer for the Cardinals to give him a qualifying offer, you know, one year, $14 million. If he walks away, you get a draft pick. And a really, really smart guy who uh, works in a front office in the American League read that. I bumped into him, and I asked him what he thought. He goes, no, it's not a no-brainer to give him a qualifying offer because he said his defense in the outfield has become incredibly bad that he's become a major liability on defense. And he pointed me to a couple metrics which completely supported that. He's easily statistically the worst defensive right fielder in baseball this year. So in the mind of this really smart person, he said he's unplayable there going forward. He has to be a full-time DH. Um, and I don't know exactly how much return you're going to get for a designated hitter in a trade. I just don't think teams – think of the DH spot the way they did 20 years ago. I think they like to keep it flexible. And I think Billy Butler is a, in, in terms of being a full-time guy at a DH and a team investing in that, he's kind of a dinosaur. He's one of the last guys, David Ortiz being another. So I don't know if they'd get a lot in trade for him. And see, that's, that was going to lead to my next question because I saw your retweet about uh, Cuban defector Jose Abreu. He's expected to be uh, in the $70 million range. White Unbelievable. Sox, the White Sox, the Astros, and the Rangers are viewed as the front runners. But with the success of Giannis Cespedes and, and Yasiel Puig for less money, I think that's something you have to explore, even if you're Kansas City. But again, this is a guy that would have to DH, so that eliminates the Royals. Uh, the same scenario. Do you try to trade Billy Butler to make room for him and get creative because this guy looks like he could be a stud? I tell you what, for the amount of dollars involved, and by the way, since I tweeted that out, uh, I was told the Rangers are now not going to be a team that signs him. It's going to be the White Sox or the Astros, according to my sources. Uh, I, it, it's a stunning amount of money, and given the questions about the player. I mean, Yasiel Puig, is, as you guys have seen, he's, you know, he's a Bo Jackson type of athlete, mm -hmm. and there's so many things he can do. And, uh, and Suspettis isn't quite to that level, but he can play the outfield. What I'm told about Breu is that he... Uh, as you say, he basically is a first baseman. He's a right-handed hitter. And there are significant questions uh, from people in other organizations about whether or not he can hit a fastball. But I think that this is a case where the White Sox and the Astros uh, are desperate. They've got money available. They're looking for change, and they're betting high. And to put that number in perspective, I mean, when Puig signed for about $50 million, uh, people thought that was high. And they're going seventy million dollars for a less dynamic player. Cespedes got forty million. That's why these numbers are shocking people around baseball. Buster, thank you so much for the time. We will uh, watch your coverage at ESPN at ESPN.com, and we'll talk to you next week. 
Thanks, guys. That's Buster only from ESPN, our baseball insider. We are live on Sports Radio 810 WHB and 38 The Spot. You're listening to the Border Patrol on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Nice family guy. When Peter and the guys go looking for sunken treasure. I think we got one. Peter reels in a fishy new pal. Name's Billy. Billy Finn. It's got Finn in it. Who makes himself right at home. Oh, hello. What the hell? Here I am. Thank you. Squid pro quo. <laughs> Thank you for not being shellfish. I just said that for the halibut. <laughs> Next Family Guy, your discretion advised. Watch tonight at 6 on 38th The Spot. Sell your house today. We're the We Buy Ugly Houses people. We buy houses in as-is condition. Foreclosure, inheritance, whatever your home hassle is. Don't make another house payment. Get your cash fast. We Buy Ugly Houses, 913-583-1199. Now that I have insurance, I can call her doctor. Introducing free talk and text from Assurance Wireless in your area. It's the best value in calling plans among major lifeline assistance programs. Assurance Wireless offers eligible households a free phone, 250 free voice minutes, and 250 free texts each month. Now that I have assurance, I can talk and text with no worries. With free talk and text, you get a free phone, nationwide coverage, and these calling features. It's a great way to connect to more. Now that we have assurance, we can keep in touch with our grandchildren. You may qualify if you're on Medicaid, food stamps, or certain other public assistance programs. It's a great value. Call now to see if you qualify for free talk and text, a free phone, 250 free voice minutes, and 250 free texts each month with no annual contract. Call 1-800-833-8333 or visit assurancewireless.com. That's 1-800-833-8333. 1-800-833-8333. Call today. National American University presents one. Be a full-time student one day a week, only one day or one night, even Saturday. One day, one night, Saturday is all right. Online's just fine. Nighttime, anytime. Get your degree. Set yourself free. National American University. Be a full-time student one day a week at National American University. Call 866-628-1288. Is now open. Kansas City's premier Mazda dealer. Just seats of 135th and State Line on Highway 150. Check out these premier Mazda offers. $2,000 cash back on all in stock CX-5s or 0.9 APR for 60 months. Plus up to $1,000 owner loyalty cash just for owning a Mazda. That's the premier Mazda difference. Premier deals on premier vehicles. Just seats of 135th and State Line on Highway 150 or at premiermazdakc.com. Storm Shield versus Weather Radio. Both keep you safe, but only one has radar, school closings, and live video screen from Kansas City's weather leader. Plus, there's this. 41 Action Weather Storm Shield for iPhone and Android. Download at KSHB.com slash mobile. The day is never long enough, and there's too much to do. House calls to look good. Hey, wait, slow down. Watch Cozy TV. It's the easiest decision you'll make all day. At Edelman and Thompson, we've represented the victims of drunk and distracted drivers for nearly 20 years. We know the physical and financial toll these accidents take on victims and their families. Our responsibility to clients goes beyond the hundreds of millions of dollars we've won for them. It means helping them put their lives and their families' lives back together. We're proud to play a part in making Kansas City's roads a little safer. Don't make another house payment. Sell your house today. We're home investors. We buy houses in any condition. Whatever your home hassle is, I can help. Call me by Thursday and I'll give you an extra $1,000. We're the We Buy Ugly Houses people. 913-583-1199. Control on Sports Radio 810 WHB 38 The Spot. I want the camera on Nick Leckie at all times. No switching back and forth. The entire time I want the camera on Nick Leckie. He's in studio. He's getting up earlier with us. I want him to be the star of this segment. I want I think Kansas City to watch him closely. I don't think it really matters if the camera's on him or not. He is the star of this segment. <laughs> we found that out last week. 
This man has a presence about him that captivates the imagination. Is that, is that what we found out? Yeah. I think uh, so. But it's, it's also been, too, like, always when I, when I come on without the cameras, too. Just I act the same. Yeah, no, it's, there's no difference. I'd, I'd like to point that out. Yeah, there's no difference. Since, right? it, since this is a visual medium now, can we show people your finger? <laughs> see, now that sounds see, who bad. Who are you talking to? That sounds bad. <laughs> but can we see that thing right there? What? Now what? Every time. Watch this. You, watch watch this. Make, make it go oh, sideways. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? That hurts me just Do to look again. at. Do it again. So, so, so you like, like this, these Oh, yeah, here you go. Look, okay, yeah. so it's flat, right? And then just put it sideways. Are we getting that, Jake? It over. So is that just. Zoom in on that? Hold it. Is that just. Did one, oh, no, 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 no. It, did one incident do that? Is that just over the years? Like, what happened? Tell me what happened. Put it right there. Put your finger right that there. Was, for those okay, so as a... Now, as is this a, football related? Yes, sir. <laughs> this, this is awesome. Are you sure? As a kid, um, you know, A&M, Texas, back forth, you know, I'm from Dallas, want to go there. My uh -huh. Uncle Mike lives in, the, my, my mom's side of the family lives in Hemet, California, which is about an hour, two hours east of L.A. And east he was LA. a... Yeah, right? <laughs> He was a big UCLA fan, or is, and so I went to UCLA football camp uh, summer before my senior year, and it was shoulder pads and helmets, and I'm blocking a guy, one-on-one -on -one pass pro, and I, I, I punch him, and he goes to, to move on me, and my, my finger just gets caught, mm. and it just bends over, and, and you know, I, I told the coach I couldn't be able to practice, because, you know, my finger was dislocated, and he goes, well, I thought you guys from Texas were supposed to be tough. Oh. I was like, all right, well, what did I, you I, say I, then? Uh, I said, well, I don't really care about being at this camp, because I've got a season to prepare for. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they stopped recruiting me then. My dream of playing in L.A. was over. No, oh, just wow. dashed. Just, all just all right you did there. was win a Big 12 championship after that. So ever since then, you can do that? Like, did So what ha it was dislocated. You pop it back in place. Yeah. I mean, what are the ligaments all torn up? Is that why you can I do that? I would assume so. I, I just popped it back in place uh, and, you know, practicing uh, poorly, very poorly. Cause, you know, it hurts mm -hmm. when, you know, as an O-lineman, you don't realize how much, like, a tiny cut on your hand will just affect everything in mm -hmm. your whole entire play sphere, and it, it hurt. And it was only one more day. I had to go through, and I made it. And my mom saw it like six months later, and she asked me to get it checked out, and the doctor <laughs> was like, you know, there's nothing we can do now. <laughs> a, little, a little late now, six months down the road. See, when he talks, when Nick talks to us, he's, he talks with his hands, which I appreciate because uh -huh. he's animated. But then when I'm sitting across from him here, Stephen, every time he does, I see like one finger that's pointing totally in the opposite direction of the other, like, nine fingers on his does hand. Does it distract you? It does. It's one of those things where I tell myself, look at, look at Nick's beautiful eyes and don't, don't stare at the mangled finger that he's got that's going in one direction. Okay. But that's like a battle scar as yeah. a football player, right? That's just part of the deal. It's, it's an O-line thing. It's a wide receiver thing. I played with uh, Torrey Holt, and he had some nasty gnarled fingers. And they really? were just, like, floppy when he clapped. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> It was so gnarly. I was like, ugh, I got to look away. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's include everything, all okay. body parts. What okay. was the oh, worst boy. thing that you would see within reason in the within, locker room? In the locker room? As far as a football injury or some kind of deformity caused by football or something that you said, boy, I, it's hard for me to look at, but I simply can't turn away. Oh, man, I've seen, uh, I saw Marcel Ship when we were in Arizona. I was a rookie in 04. Marcel Ship. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, uh, he broke his leg on the AstroTurf. Oh, no. And I just can't. I'm, like, part sadistic. Right. I, I don't know. I'm masochistic. I don't know what it is, but I like, I don't like to see it, but I'll look. Right? Like, you can't look away. Yeah. Like, well, like, then you like to see it. I like to yeah. see it. You're looking. Yeah. Just admit it. I guess I do, yeah. Uh, right. I, I didn't want to straight up admit that and be like a serial killer. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. stuff. I'm not, I'm like, turn. I'm not a rubberneck. I like turn. You like go oh, okay. Yeah, I like turn. You don't even try to hide it. No, I don't. Uh -huh. Whatever. I'm like, okay. So, well, how bad was the break? Is this the kind where, like, a compound fracture, the bone sticking out in one direction? It, it wasn't compound, but but his ankle was definitely floppy. Oh, it was like hanging there? Yeah, hanging it was there? flopping. Oh. It was like, and, but the, 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 the thing about football that, that people don't see unless you go to practices right. is it's like, okay, he breaks, like, he's like, you know, writhing in pain, and, and Coach Green is like, all right, move practice down there. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so barbaric. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah. It was Dennis Green. Yeah. yeah. Denny yeah. Green, boss man. He, yeah. He's my, my godfather, man. I, I love that dude. Did you ever see him play the drums? I've asked you that before. Uh, no, I, I've seen pictures. He was an accomplished drummer, as from what mm -hmm. I've been I could see that. He's got rhythm. Mm -hmm. He's got rhythm for sure. Did you yeah. like him as a coach? I liked him as a was coach. Was he your favorite head coach as far as the NFL? Favorite head coach. Um, Who the head, tell us the head coaches that you had in the NFL. Uh, D Denny Green. Okay. Uh, Ken Wisenhunt. I was with Arizona for two weeks before I got cut. He seems like he's mad a lot. He's mad. He's okay. angry. Yeah. <laughs> so right off the bat, he's mad. <laughs> yeah. right. But, but I, I like Russ Grimm there, the O-line coach. Uh, Scott Linehan. 
in St. Louis. Did you like him? I liked Scott. He was he a good dude. He, he was a really good dude. Long, no, he didn't. Well, it's tough when you win four game or two games in, in two years. In two years, mm -hmm. and that, that's rough. And then Peyton, Sean Peyton with New Orleans. Okay, we're not – Sean Peyton, was he – what did you think of him? I liked him. Okay. He was awesome because he, 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 like, knew he had a great – sense of like where players stood like i remember we were preparing for the super bowl it, he was like all right shocky i need you to be unhinged you know say whatever you want you know get these guys fired up you know if you want to talk junk in the media talk junk and and i thought that was really cool because i've never seen a coach really kind of control the 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 outside of football kind of aspect and he was like we're gonna put billboards all over miami with the saint stuff you know because when he was in new york when they got beat by the ravens in 2000 he was like, you know, we went to the Super Bowl, and the Ravens have all these billboards, and they're getting gifts at night. So when we went there in the Super Bowl, we had – every night we had a gift in our hotel room. Uh, there were billboards everywhere with the, the, the Florida Lee everywhere, and it was really cool. It felt like, you know, we came down to Miami and owned it. Next week, will you bring your Super Bowl ring in so we can see it on camera? Yes, I will. How often do you wear it? Um, three times a year. What, what, I'll, three, I'll wear what, what, like what three times? What, there's like certain special events like Christmas. Do you bring it out at the, <laughs> at the dinner table? I'm just asking. I, I don't want to get. <laughs> Who wants does, to see does Uncle Nick's ring, does kids? Your, does your wife ever say, "You know what? T tonight, wear the ring"? No, she knows. She, well, she wear, knows. Wear the jersey. Wear the she ring. Knows. Yeah, a little role playing. <laughs> wear the helmet. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Wear your cleats. <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. but the wear cleats the in the ring. Wear the helmet. The helmet. Wear the helmet. <laughs> wear the helmet. <laughs> wear the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Mouthpiece. I mean, I would think that would be you know. Yeah. You know, See, uh, this is the way Stephen thinks. Right. And, and I like. I like that. I like that line. Yeah. Of Why wouldn't you wear it? I yeah. do. Oh, hey, how are you? I have a, I have an orange bowl ring. Do you wear it? But here's the difference. I didn't do anything to earn that yeah, ring. You did. Like I didn't actually play in the no, game. You you're know, you're paying for it now. That's well. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. I am earning it right now. <laughs> I have the a, last uh, three years, I've earned that ring. I have a ring from the uh, Kansas City Knights ABA Championship ring because I was a PA hey. announcer. Oh. And it has a microphone on the side. It says that's PA. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. You wear yours. I wear mine. You wear you yours. Have a ring party. Next week. Ring party. I like yeah. that. You put then put the rings in the fishbowl and then we all <laughs> I was like, hey, wait a minute. We all yeah. wait a minute. Where'd it go? <laughs> Let's put a white a rock. Uh, Dude, now does the ring go on the the mangled finger? You gotta put it on the in on the, the middle. middle. Yeah. What's going on? Hey, watch we're on TV. Yeah. Don't do yeah. that. <laughs> we uh we're gonna do you wanna talk football next segment or no? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> uh, we're listening to Nick Leckie tell stories right here on Sports Radio A ten WHB and thirty eight the spot. The Border Patrol with Stephen St. John and Nate Buchanan on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Can Springfield survive its social networking obsession? Watch the road! Right, Homer is watching the... Dislike! Dislike! The Simpsons. Watch tonight at 6.30 on 38th The Spot. It's been said you have to cross an ocean to find a vehicle with safety, reliability, and quality. The bar may have been set over there, but when it comes to raising it, we'll take it from here. The awarded Chrysler lineup. Right now, get 0% financing for up to 72 months on Chrysler vehicles. On the border, endless enchiladas. 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 Endless enchiladas, just $8.99. Beef, chicken, or cheese with rice, beans, and endless chips and salsa at On the Border. You know you want it. Enchiladas. It's the biggest red tag sale in mattress firm history. For the next 72 hours only, mattresses store-wide are red tagged and on sale at rock bottom prices. Like a queen size set, red tagged at the unheard of price of just $179. And never seen before red tag deals on top name brands, even Tempur-Pedic. Get $300 in mattress firm bonus cash when you buy a Tempur-Pedic mattress set. Plus 0% interest for five full years for the next 72 hours only during the biggest red tag sale in mattress firm history. If you've been injured in an auto accident and the insurance company tells you that you don't need a lawyer, then you need a lawyer. Peterson & Associates, protecting you. At Nebraska Furniture Mart, using awesome 20-month financing on a new Franklin recliner. Price, $449. $440 off suggested retail. Hello? 20-month 
financing. Oh, just spend two ninety nine or more on furniture, flooring, appliances, and electronics. Can I get it on a range microwave combo? We'll send a picture. It's just ten ninety nine for the pair after rebate. Savings everywhere with special financing on select brands of flooring, TVs, and appliances. No more time to text. Time to save and save plenty at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Oh, the football reunion and foot in mouth. How you been? Great. You know, I mean, other than this, I didn't even notice that you were in a uh, next King of Queens. So how's that working out for you? Watch today at 5 on 38th The Spot for comedy. Next Family Guy, when Peter and the guys go looking for sunken treasure. I think we got one. Peter reels in a fishy new pal. Name's Billy. Billy Finn. It's got Finn in it. Who makes himself right at home. Oh, hello. What the hell? Here I am. Thank you. Squid pro quo. <laughs> Thank you for not being shellfish. I just said that for the halibut. <laughs> Next Family Guy, your discretion advised. Watch tonight at 6 on 38th The Spot. Stan presents How to Be an American Dad. And the ultimate testament to my greatness. Work hard. I'll be home for dinner. I gotta go. Somebody just dropped a bunch of work on my desk. Protect your family. I'll save us. Oh, Stan. And always keep your sense of humor. Hey, check it out. I just got that kid to Mickey Mouse ear, that guy. <laughs> American Dad. Viewer discretion advised. Watch weeknights at midnight on 38th The Spot for comedy. Right this minute, videos first. Lingerie shopping through the eyes of a child. She's so perplexed by the magnitude of this place. On the next, right this minute. Watch tonight at 7 on 38th The Spot. 810 WHB. Good morning, Kansas City. I'm Aaron Swartz with your bottom of the hour update. The Chiefs returned to practice yesterday with some good news as tight end Anthony Fasano returns after being held out since week three with knee and ankle issues. A boost for a struggling offense and Alex Smith, who has seen his completion percentage drop the past three weeks. The Chiefs text on Sunday at 3.30. Chiefs a six-point favorite. The Tigers tie up the ALCS with a 73 win last night over the Red Sox. You can hear Game 5 on 102.9 FM tonight. The Dodgers win 6-4 and keep the NLCS alive against the Cardinals Game 6 Friday night. Seahawks and Cardinals tonight on Thursday Night Football right here on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Your home for the NFL on Kansas City kickoff at 7.30. This beautiful man right here is coming up next. Second segment. Hey, and J.D. on Thompson, too. 7.45, huh? I'm Aaron Sports with your bottom of the hour update. I'm not going to spend hardly any time on it. On Sports Video 810 WHB 38 spot. 30 second reaction to Baylor 35, Kansas State 25, go. It's about how I expected it to go. Uh, I do like how K State is doing things with, with Waters and with Sam's. Spread them out, let the Waters toss it. And I saw in third one they put in Sam's, and he had some good drives. And if anything, that gives opposing teams each week more to prepare because you really have to you really have to have two different game plans you have to have your passing attack and you have to have your, your ground game attack and so that creates a lot of confusion i just wish we'd have done this the first three non-conference games instead of waiting till the third fourth game of big 12 play so it, it was you weren't totally disappointed because you felt like baylor was going to win but we talked about the what was the question whether or not they keep them to under 50 and they did that and so you feel good moving forward I do. Every game from here on out will be, you know, 50-50. You know, the, it'll be slight edge towards the, whoever's the home team. They'll win the next two, home against West Virginia, home against Iowa State after they have a bye week, right? You think. You definitely think. But like I want I said, you to guarantee it. I'm guaranteeing it. That's better. They win this week, too. I mean, you've got to guarantee it. At home, well, bye week. By a lot. By a lot, yes. Uh, They're going to get refocused, re-energized. Watch them Chiefs. Do you think that Missouri will be Florida with Matty Mocky quarterback. I think that's tough. I think I think uh, when when they they lost uh, old buddy last week, that was tough. That was where I saw him in a sling, and I'm like, what James happened? Franklin, yes. I'm like, what happened? Frank the Tank. I'm gonna have to start watching Missouri. I feel like since Missouri's in SEC, I feel like Missouri, like they just moved Columbia, they plucked it out of Missouri, and I feel like it's like in the border of like Florida and Georgia. 
Because I feel like Missouri is worlds away right now. I it's, really do. It's not, Nick. It's right down. I it does kind of feel that way, though. doesn't it? Can I take you to a game? Would you like to go to a, let, Let's get tickets to the South Carolina game. We can go, me, you, and my boys. We can have some fun. We can go eat. Mm, they have turkey legs there sure. in front of you? Well, Speaking it. of turkey legs, we, uh, are you still up for going to the, uh, the cider mill Sunday morning? Yeah. We've talked about that. They have turkey legs there. Want to come oh, to you a little what, what? We're doing a family outing. The, the uh, cider, Lewisburg take... cider mill Sunday morning because the Chiefs yeah. don't play till 3.15. I've got, I've got to do pregame on Sunday. Yeah, well, that doesn't start until noon, does it? No, no, it's 8, 8 to uh, so nine, starts, nine. Actually, Sprint starts pregame at 5 Even for a 325 kick? Yeah. I don't even, even know the own schedule here. Yeah. <laughs> Get somebody else to do it and come to the cider mill with us. We're going to eat turkey legs and uh, cider donuts and all that. Yeah, I'm going to have turkey legs on Sunday. Well, see. Have them with us. Double turkey Anything. legs. You guys remember that stovetop commercial? Which one? The one where like the, the 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 fat kid was on the phone and you know the house phone because it was uh -huh. like ninety four. Uh -huh. You know Jake's lost a lot of weight and I don't understand why you'd say <laughs> something like that. Now let's talk about Chiefs and Texans. We had uh, Mike Devito on the Chiefs Player Show last night and we talked about the defensive linemen and the responsibilities and trying to stop this run game. Gary Kubiak was the offensive coordinator with the Broncos. We've seen it all before. Arian Foster is tremendously productive. Uh, listen to Mike Devito's comments and I'd like you to comment, and you tell me from an offensive lineman's perspective why this run game is so successful and how the Chiefs can stop it. Yeah. Right. I mean, they have very fast athletic offensive linemen, which is something you don't normally see. Uh, and then it's all about creating uh, cutback lanes and holes and zones for the, uh, for the, for the running back to, uh, to hit downhill. Uh, so there's no, when, when they you know, start a play, there's no, okay, you're running in the B gap, or you're running in the C gap. I mean, they're, they're waiting to see what opens up, and that's what Aaron Foster does such a great job of, is he doesn't rush anything. It almost looks like he's jogging back there, then he'll see the hole, and boom, cut it and hit it downhill. So, uh, you have to, you, and again, they're, they're, they're great, they do a great job of cutting guys, so they'll take off running and, and cut you, and that'll, you know, leave a huge lane uh, backside for him to hit. So, it's going to be about guys staying on their feet, uh, playing team defense, and you really have to uh, uh, pay attention to backfield sets, uh, and you have to play. You have to play discipline. You you can't. This is one of those games you can't take a chance. You know you have to play discipline, uh, strong defense. How, how difficult is that? Because you know we always talk about fighting off blocks and and strength and power, but you talk about avoiding getting cut, staying on your feet. Then you talk about balance and footwork. That's got to be one of the more frustrating things, but also that's a little bit different than what uh, normally you would have to do. So so what type of challenge is that for the defensive lineman to stay on his feet like that? Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's not something you see every week. You know what I mean? In fact, it's, you see it once a year with these guys, you know. So uh, so it's it's not something that you're used to. It's hard to simulate it in practice because you're obviously not cutting each, cutting each other in practice, and you got guys that, you know, don't really know how to run that kind of offense that don't run it all the time. So... Uh, so it's a challenge, but uh, again, it, it, it goes you know back to film study, uh, being mentally having an edge, and, and putting yourself in the best positions, uh, and putting a real focus on your your feet and your hands, and, and making sure you're in the right spot. Tell me more about what he's talking about and what this offensive lineman does. He talked about the cut blocks and trying to stay fighting to stay on your feet. Gary Kubiak was a disciple of Shanahan mm -hmm. when, they, when they won all that action, right? Right. And I personally. Back before I moved here, used to love watching Tom Nalen. Like, Tom Nalen was the center. I could watch and see, like, this guy's a legend. He's a great, but he's a littler guy, and he uses technique, and, and they run a lot of zone schemes. So, so I could watch him and see how he does things. And what they do is you run so many zone schemes, you run so many sweet plays, and you rely on these athletic linemen to be able to reach second level, reach shaded tackles, and... A lot of the premise, too, is if you're running to the left, Arian Foster is reading that right tackle, right guard, and if either of those guys get a cut, if, if, if they chop their, their D lineman down, he's, he's hitting that hole because you have right there, it's, it's so quick, it's so quick. He, he's, he's, looking, he's looking play side towards the left, but if he sees any of those right guard, right tackle make a cut, that's his cutback lane. And he does such a good job of hitting that because you'll see he'll be like two steps up and then just make a cut and boom. Uh, he did a lot of that versus the Rams last yes. week. Yes. Took big chunks yards too. Yes. Definitely saw that. Now, as a defensive lineman, is that considered a dirty play? 
you know, it's starting to... That's a great point. The Broncos were yeah. always accused of being dirty back in those days. Because, it's, because it's, nobody wants you to come after their knees. Uh, I think football players are more sensitive about their knees than their heads, aren't they? They, they really are for, for the time being because that, that's your short term. I mean, th if you mm -hmm. get chopped and you get hurt, then, you know, you get hurt in the year, you know, you're out. You're done. Because you see some mad defensive linemen. You do. And, and it's one of those things where, like, you know, you're, you're so... You're, everyone's such a mercenary except for, like, top three guys on each team that there is a brotherhood. You want to protect each other. And, and, yeah, you cut. People get mad, and it's no big deal. But at the same time, they do it so effectively, and they do it every play. And as a D lineman, you've got to be conscious that, that especially the Chiefs, because they like to fire off the ball. And if you fire off the ball, and that's an easy cut. And, then, and that means one guy is, is cutting the D tackle, and the other guy, if they're combo blocking, is getting up to the second level and, and you know, making the linebacker make a decision and you know, open up big holes for the running backs. Okay, so if you're Bob Sutton and you're this Chiefs defense, what, what are you preaching this week? What are some of the things that you have to do to be successful and not let Arian Foster have a huge day? Play the, uh, play the cut blocks. You know, there are certain things that you can do, like as a D lineman, so simple as just putting your hands out there and just playing them and just putting them on the ground. And you know, you know when you do that, the drill, when, when you, you run by the bags laterally and you're touching the bags each time, you know, that's what they're going to be emphasizing this week. And, and once you get past that, uh, just holding your gap and really, and so it'll cut down the penetration. And, uh, so, but I think they'll be able to out physical them. That sounds like that would really neutralize Don Tari Poe because he's been, that's been the thing that's impressed us so much about him is that he can blow up the guy in front of him mm -hmm. and get into the backfield. Does he have to play differently? And will that be hard for him because he's such a young player? I, I, I think he realizes w what's going to happen, and he realizes what his strengths are, what his weaknesses are, and I think he'll have to change it up a little bit. But then at the same time, come third down, you know, he's going to be able to bring it. Because, you know, he really don't cut on a drop back pass play. And especially mm -hmm. with, with, you know, they think Schaub might have a chance to make it. And, you know, two younger quarterbacks don't really know the system. It'll be important to get pressure early. How does that affect a, uh, a team when you just don't know who the quarterback is going to be? Because Matt Schaub's battling leg injuries. And yesterday at practice for Houston, you had T.J. Yates and Case Keenum uh, splitting snaps with the first team. So even if Schaub doesn't play... You might see a couple of quarterbacks out there, and that's a team that's already struggled holding on to the football. You have that gamesmanship where you don't want to give up to the opponent who's going to be the quarterback, but doesn't that kind of hurt the, the preparation for the offense as well? It, it makes you step your game up more, but at the same time, I always feel like Wednesday practice is kind of a, like who's getting healthy, you know, who, who's, who's coming back. And Thursday, like there better be a, a one determined today on Thursday. Like you better come out of practice saying this is our guy because you need that Friday practice to be, you know, you want fast Friday. You, you don't want to have to think about who's the quarterback coming off the block. Uh, you know, it, is he going to have a command? And as a center, you don't want two different cadences. It really, it really messes with you. Like, that's why whenever a new quarterback comes in, you see, like, a center snap the ball over the head. I mean, that cadence, just that voice, you know, you get used to it. You know, like how you can hear your mom's voice in a crowd. You get used to that quarterback's voice. When you bring in a new quarterback, different cadence, different rhythm, it throws off things slightly. Well, with the Chiefs crowd, that's going to make it that much more difficult for the Texans' offensive line, I would think. It will. And just I think for the Texans, though, everything's simple. They have zones, you know, points and things like that for, uh, for pass protection, like which every team does. But I feel like their schemes are simpler. It's, it's zone left, zone right, sweep left, sweep right, screen, screen to foster. So I, I think they have a simple enough game plan to be effective in a away environment. Chiefs win. What's the score? This one will be, I, I feel like they're going to get 17. Oh. Uh, the Texans will. And I think the Chiefs will have a big offensive production. Everyone's kind of calling out the offense for not really mm -hmm. doing a lot. Attack. And they're going to attack. And I think they're going to be able to do that. 38? Uh, let's say. Ooh. I'm, I'm throwing a number out there. Yeah, I like that. I'm throwing a number out there. Pick That's six good. involved? Or what, I, I like 38, 38 on offense. It's right. I like 38. Because I, I was thinking, I was thinking, mm. like, seven. I mean, I was I thinking 35 and a field goal. It's as 38. See, I was, yeah, just kind of 38 the spot is what I'm talking wow. about. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Well, look at that. Look at that. That's what we do. Look at that. Uh, that was amazing. On, 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 I think they're going to score 810 <laughs> points. <laughs> That's, uh, For 810. Uh, Nick you know? Lickie, you are a gentleman. Thank you. You are. Thank you for coming to the scholar. Video. Thank you. I was waiting for that, too. Well, wow. need both. Up next, uh, Jadion Thompson will join us, and she will uh, talk nothing but football. Cause it's, that's She's going to break down her. zone blocking schemes. Thank you. Now back at to this with more on WHB and 38 The Spot. You're listening to the Border Patrol. The Border Patrol. The Border Patrol. On Sports Radio 810 WHB.
It's a high school football reunion. How you been? It's been great. You know, I mean, other than this, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't even notice that you were in a... Uh... So how's that working out for you? And Doug's the fifth wheel. If I had my choice, I'd rather be walking. Right, right. You know, I should do more walking myself. I, uh... Again, so sorry. Next, King of Queens. When he gets here, don't stare or anything, okay? Because I was going to go for one of these. <laughs> Watch today at 5 on 38th of Spot for Comedy. Stop wasting money on house payments and repairs. Sell it today. Problem houses in any condition are no problem. We'll buy it as is so it's hassle-free and fast. Call us, the We Buy Ugly Houses people, 1-800-44-BUYER. That's 1-800-44-BUYER. Then it's slow again. I am really freaking out about having another kid. Why, you're a great father. It's not that. It's that one more person would be sharing our internet. AT&T DSL is already slow. Well, they are the phone company. With Time Warner Cable, you can power all of your family's devices at the same time with internet that's not limited like DSL. If your internet's slow, it's time to rethink AT&T. Call 1-855-WANT-TWC to get internet for as little as $19.99 a month. Ask how you can upgrade and get a $300 Visa reward card. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I am a helpful smile. I'm a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am. I. I am a helpful smile. I've been a helpful smile for 23 years. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am a helpful smile. I am Ivy. Want to get your hands on some of this? Yeah, we thought so. And now's a great time to do it. During Nissan's Easy Choice sales event, choose to go further. Connect better. Get in easier. And get your hands on a great deal, too. Like 0% APR on Pathfinder. Or save up to 2500 on Rogue. The choice is yours. Shop today at ChooseNissan.com. Call Brown and Crouppen right now at 777-7777. In just seven weeks, you could begin your new career in nursing as a certified nursing assistant. Call National American University, 913-981-8700, and enroll today. The CNA Certified Nursing Assistant Program is a seven-week course. Think of it. In just seven weeks, you'll complete your training, receive your certificate, and begin your new career in nursing. Call National American University, 913-981-8700, and enroll today. Storm Shield versus Weather Radio. Both keep you safe, but only one has radar, school closings, and live video screen from Kansas City's Weather Leader. Plus, there's this. 41 Action Weather Storm Shield for iPhone and Android. Download at kshb.com slash mobile. The day is never long enough, and there's too much to do. House calls, gotta look good. Hey, wait, slow down. Watch Cozy TV. It's the easiest decision you'll make all day. On the next community, Annie's been robbed. Whoa, whoa, where do you people think you're going? Lockdown! The investigation begins. We don't trust Abed. He shredded my backpack. He put gum in your hair. Empty the bag, Abed. Watch tonight at 9 on 38 The Spot. Six far out friends. A million groovy laughs. Just good TV. Watch That 70s Show weeknights at 8 on 38 The Spot. Foreclosure, inheritance, or just need to get out? Sell your house fast. We buy houses in as-is condition, so it's hassle-free. Call us. We're the We Buy Ugly Houses people. 1-800-44-BUYER. Let us help you today. 1-800-44-BUYER. Based solely upon the number of participants. Welcome back to the Border Patrol Live on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Stephen St. John and Nate Bucati in studio. Thanks a lot to Nick Lecky for setting us straight. Now we have another special in-studio guest. Jodion Thompson joins us, and she's an anchor reporter for 41 Action News. Can I give your Twitter account? Do you encourage followers? I encourage okay. followers. At Jodion TV, J-A-D-I-A-N-N-T-V. And she'll keep you updated on what's going on. But she wants to remind you that links and retweets are not endorsements. 
Is that right? I had to dance us in from the break, and That's now fine. I realize that, that those on TV can actually see what I do here now, so I have to be a little more That's careful. That's why you have to dance well. in the break. <laughs> so, so I'm going to wave. Hello, everyone watching on 38 The Spot. For people that need to be reminded, tell us uh, where you were before and where you were from originally, for those that have just been watching you on the television. Right. So I want to start by saying this is my six-month anniversary. Oh. See, that's wow. why we had you in. We knew that. Yeah, that's right? exactly why we did this. Uh, Congratulations. That's what I thought, boys. Yeah. Paying really yeah. close attention to anniversaries, mm -hmm. right. are you? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I'm excited. Never forget an anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, just moved from Phoenix, so I was chatting it up with your uh, your last guest. Nick Leckie, who played little, in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. played there for the Cardinals for a while. Right? right. I lived right across the street from Cardinal Stadium there. Although, I have all intact fingers. Nothing. Oh, well. I won't be doing know. any awkward You can't dislocate pointing. any of your fingers or anything? <laughs> I'm okay. Disappointing. I haven't hurt any of my fingers in the TV business yet. It's well, a nasty business, though, isn't it? <laughs> Although it can get kind of nasty. <laughs> in, in, in your... Uh Originally Arkansas. From Northwest Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas. Went okay. to school at Fayetteville, so. So you're a Razorback. Fish. I'm a Razorback at, yes. Do you, do you. Do you ever like post videos of yourself and like with, uh, with a piece of tape on your nose and no. sing songs about the Arkansas Razorback football team? Yeah, no. So much to you guys' surprise, I actually was a real nerd in college and studied all the time. And really the only reason I knew there was a game, because I'd be sitting in the library on Saturdays and watch all the people go by and they're hog gear. So you don't care that they're that they're having a bad season right now. You're not Sorry, like, Razorbacks, that's fine. but I care a little. Not really. Sometimes. Because mm -hmm. I don't. I'm, I, I'm glad. <laughs> so, I mean, I just like when they win a game, I'm like, woo, yay, woo you. pig. And I'll yeah. be like, woo. And then... How do you feel about that cheer, the whole woo pig <laughs> suey thing? Just, oh, gosh. <laughs> no. So, so, well, I grew uh, up on a farm, so it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I wanted to uh, thank you before we get into to more craziness. Thank you for coming out and being thank a part you. of the uh, Walk to Defeat ALS. Yeah. That was uh, a lot of fun. Nate, you missed out. No, I didn't because you almost stole my baby daughter. Right, yeah, but he, um, you know, that day. that's right. Steven and I had a lot of fun sort of yeah. emceeing together. Yeah. And then um, you walked by with your wife and kids, yes. and I'm not kidding. His... Uh, <clears throat> Little little thing about me, you know, most right. girls are like baby crazy. I'm mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm perfectly willing to admit when I see a pretty baby and when I see a not so pretty baby. Okay. <laughs> now moms I'm are gonna hate me. This is an <laughs> ugly baby yeah. scene. Give um, us some um, names. Yeah, here. Name names. Not naming any names. Name <laughs> now moms are gonna hate me, right? Uh -huh. So. I hope not a lot of moms are listening to sports radio. Like the, a, a mom that has recently shown you her baby. <laughs> Does she think my baby's ugly? <laughs> Every woman that's now had you I have baby's baby. I haven't kissed any babies or cut any ribbons lately. Right. Okay, so his kids are beautiful. Right. That's right. I'm not even right. kidding. Like, I did want to take them home with me. Mm -hmm. And they you tried to. And then, then I did. I took, I took one of them you. out of the, of the stroller, right. and yeah. I thought yeah. that I could just casually walk away, and right. they started looking at me strangely, and I had to put the baby back. But they clearly was, take after me. Right. I want to come. I don't know. Me. His wife is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. So she I'm is gorgeous, say, and, and, and my kids look like her. So that's, thank you. I'm not kidding. Yeah. They are beautiful children. And he's a sweet daddy, so he is. that was a lot that's, of fun. You know, that was a nickname in uh, sweet college. Daddy. Sweet daddy. <laughs> that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people that's still your, uh, don't that's know that's that. That's your new uh, Twitter yeah. handle. So that yeah, was a really daddy. great event for mm -hmm. people that don't know about the Walk to Defeat ALS. That's I'm right. on the board of directors for the ALS Association, Keith Worthington Chapter, and you had uh, a reason to be out there. I did, and so I got uh, involved with them a few months ago, and then they said, well, we're doing the walk. We want you to come out, too. So it was a real privilege. They kept saying, thank you for being here. No, I was thanking them for letting me be there. Right. It was a real privilege mm -hmm. for me just because my grandmother passed away of ALS when I was a little girl and uh, I've watched my family really struggle. And I was happy to be a part of all of that. Well, we're very glad to have you and glad that you're going to be involved. So we've got a couple of minutes left. So how are you enjoying Kansas City so oh, far? Oh, it's good. I mean, I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. You know, it always takes time to get used to the city and, and just get used to your, you know, how you run your errands and, and all of those things. And I feel like I'm finally settling in and meeting some good people like you guys getting to come in and do stuff like this. I'm feeling more at home. So it's becoming, it's coming more like home. A, li a little more about you personally, though. Uh, I find it interesting that uh, you own a, a leopard skin uh, steering wheel cover. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I still don't understand how you just break. know that. How does he know this? I don't like know. He's creepy stalker. Right. Right? I don't, I'm not comfortable that he knows that. I'm gonna, he, he said, like, I'm going to ask you about a steering that? wheel. Yeah. So. What is it? Is that a big deal that I know that? Yeah, I mean, that's a huge maybe deal. I have, how do you I have, know what car I drive? Maybe I have people. What, what am I going to have to do? Start looking at my windows and well, maybe. see if you're creeping? You know what? I, I have sources around town. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Well, I yeah, have so sources. Yeah, you keep you, 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 well. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. So, I'm so Anybody sure wants right to be now. my source out there for really you know, good news? It's actually my wife. <laughs> my wife identified it because we were walking away. We were leaving the ALS thing, and you went driving by. And I said, hey, there goes Jody on. And she said, 
She has a leopard skin steering wheel cover. Wow. I okay. like that. And now oh, my wife wants to know it. where to get one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tell her to have her people call my people. And okay. that's the story he's going to go with. Yeah. Hey guys, now, as as you know. I have to bring something up. Okay. Yeah, go uh -oh. ahead. No, I was gonna. Uh, I was gonna. It's the work question. So you go ahead. You bring it up because we got. Uh, I was left. just gonna tell you. You guys look like someone who would enjoy a nice cronut. And I didn't know if you'd heard about this craze. What is it? You know the cronut craze, right? It got popular in New York. The Corona craze, like the beer. No cronuts. Come on, guys. It's the cronuts. It's, mi it's a mix between a croissant and a donut. Come on, Nate. It got oh, really no, popular like, like a seriously? few weeks ago on social media. It Everyone was all over was yesterday. Because there's there's a new restaurant in town. There's that's a new restaurant when you said in cronuts, town. Cronuts. I thought right. you were this. Guys, this you can get these in in our area now. See, because I you like croissants more this. than donuts. Can we send Aaron to go get us some cronuts right now? I think he should. I wanted to get them, but they're at the Hollywood Casino in KCK, and I couldn't. The only place you can get them? In. For now. No, I saw this. They made a big deal about it yesterday. It was a story about now they're available in Kansas City and said it's on my way home, I so think, I think I'll stop there. I think we need these. Oh, wow. Can sounds, you imagine? Sounds mm, delicious. That's like heaven in your mouth. Well, based on that, uh, we're going to break, and right now we're going <laughs> to... Jadion Thompson is going to be a guest every Off day now on the show. <laughs> that will uh, be played again many times. Just <laughs> and uh, as always, uh, we I think... I hope my boss isn't listening. And I don't know how he feels about it. Thanks uh, to Ryan Weeby for being the sponsor of this excellent segment. Hey, thanks, guys. Looking to save more money every month or pay off some bills with a new mortgage? Give my team a call at 816-778-7000 or go to firstmortgagekc.com and fill out a full online application. We'll be back uh, to wrap things up here on WHB in 38 The Spot. You're listening to the Border Patrol on Sports Radio 810 WHB. On the How I Met Your Mother. The ultimate wager, slap bet. This episode is legendary. Whoever's right gets to slap the other person in the face as hard as they possibly can, but no rings. And Robin's secret past is exposed. I know your secret, Robin. Or should I say, Robin Sparkles? I was a teenage pop star in Canada. Don't miss the next How I Met Your Mother. Watch tonight at 10 on 38 The Spot for comedy. Now that I have Assurance, I can talk and text with no worries. Introducing free talk and text from Assurance Wireless in your area. It's the best value in calling plans among major lifeline assistance programs. Assurance Wireless, a lifeline assistance program, offers eligible households a free phone, 250 free voice minutes, and 250 free texts each month. You'll get nationwide coverage in these calling features. You may qualify if you're on Medicaid, food stamps, or certain other public assistance programs. Visit AssuranceWireless.com or call 1-800-833-8333. Well, thank you. They say no good deed goes unpunished. And some days it seems true. But we keep on doing the things that matter. Like buying new Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. From now to the end of the year, a portion of each sale benefits living beyond breast cancer to empower women affected by breast cancer. New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. It's one good deed that will go just right. Together, we make the first night of football every week. Which means we make the first. And the first. The first. And of course, the first. Touchdown! Together, we make the first night of football every week. Together, we make football. Now I'm covered. Now, for the first time, you can be covered with a quality health plan from the new Health Insurance Marketplace, part of the healthcare law. It's where brand name companies offer plans you can compare side by side, and it's the only place to get lower monthly payments. I'm covered. So, if you have an accident, get sick, or just need a checkup, I'm covered. We're covered. Now we're covered. Enroll now at the Health Insurance Marketplace at healthcare.gov. For Kansas City, people are having the same reaction to the newly redesigned 2013 Honda Civic for $159 a month at your Kansas City Honda dealers. With features like rear view camera, USB port, Bluetooth, and Pandora compatibility all standard. Our competition calls these options. We call it the new look of standard. To get the newly redesigned 2013 Civic for only $159 a month, hurry to your Kansas City Honda dealers. Visit kchondadealers.com. 
It's Nebraska Furniture Mart's biggest flooring event with new ways to save, including half, half, half savings on Shaw and Tuftex and so nylon carpet, half off suggested retail, and half off the everyday low price on carpet cushion and basic installation. Take 25% off the already everyday low price on all Mannington floors, including hardwood, laminate, luxury vinyl, and ceramic tile flooring. Then use long-term 20-month financing to stretch your payments. The biggest selection, the biggest savings, the biggest flooring event at Nebraska Furniture Mart. Hit me. Welcome back to the show. This is the Border Patrol on Sports Radio 810 WHB and 38th Spot. I got 99 problems, but Jody on ain't one. That's right. 38th Spot is almost done. We had some fun. Let's stay with us on WHB 38th Spot. We will see you tomorrow. The Border Patrol continues on 810 now. You're listening to... You've been watching the Border Patrol on 38th The Spot. Lingerie shopping with a two-year-old. Next, right this minute. Watch tonight at 7. I had a couple of multiple um, couple of personalities going on. Um, I even named them. Um, one name was Samantha, and he had one, and his name was Jason. What are y'all people doing? I don't you know. <laughs> and my house is arrogant land. I don't know. It's just a... When DeAndre was introduced to Chenille, he thought he'd make...